everyone and welcome back. Today I want to share with you 21 things that you can declutter in 2021. And these are all easy things that you can declutter to really add simplicity to your daily life and to streamline the space around you so that you can create a clean, peaceful, and relaxing environment. So if you're ready to simplify your life this year, then you're in the right place. Be sure to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already and let's get right into this. All right, let's get started with the first thing that you can declutter in 2021, and that's your junk drawer. Let's be honest, most of us have some place in our home where we keep things like stamps, scissors, office supplies, and other miscellaneous items that might otherwise not have a place where they belong in our homes. But while junk drawers can serve a useful purpose, there's usually a reason why they got the name that they did. Things that aren't where they belong, trash, items that are broken, and a lot of other random things can kind of creep their way into our junk drawers over time. And so it's important that we every so often go through them and eliminate the excess and organize what remains. Okay, number two is to declutter your sheets and pillowcases. So there are really a few things to consider with this one. First off, do you have too many? Generally, I like to recommend having one set of sheets for each potential bed setup that you have on hand. For example, our house can accommodate up to six people with three bed setups, so it makes sense for me to have three pairs of sheets, one for everyone in the house, and then also six pillowcases. Usually we don't have six people in the house, so those additional sheets really do kind of serve as extras, but it's helpful to have them on hand for when we need them. Now, of course, if you have kids or something like like that you might want to keep an extra set or two of sheets on hand but the goal here is really just to figure out how many sets of sheets you actually need and then to declutter any that are excess and as you're going through this process I definitely recommend kind of looking at the sheets and figuring out if you also have any that are threadbare that are worn out that are discolored or anything like that okay number three is a big one and that's to go through your paper clutter without intentionality and really trying to stay on top of it many of us tend to accumulate far more documents and random papers than we actually need to hold on to. At the end of the day, the vast majority of papers that come into your house don't need to stay in your home. And even for things that we do need to keep on hand for a period of time, we often hold on to them for longer than we need to. So for example, with tax documents, in most situations, you'd only need to hold on to them for a maximum of three years, and in most cases, seven years. But many of us will hold on to old tax forms for long past that time. And that's not even touching on the everyday paper clutter that we receive, whether it's coupons, mailers, or anything like that. So if paper clutter isn't something that you've touched in far too long, I definitely recommend taking some time, sitting down, and going through it. Number four is excess furniture. And with this one, it really does come down to do you use it? If you use it, great, keep it. But if you have furniture items that you don't use or that you rarely use, perhaps you could consider decluttering those items. I find that bedrooms are often particularly guilty of this one, whether that's having an ottoman at the end of the bed or a chair by a window. Even though these items can look nice, oftentimes they never actually serve a functional purpose in the room and instead actually collect clutter, which ends up having a negative effect on how the space actually looks. So just look around your space and ask yourself when was the last time you used each piece of furniture? And if it's been a long time or you can't remember the last time you actually used an item, maybe it's time to sell that item or to donate it. Number seven is books. I am a pro books person, but that being said, especially for those of us with a love of reading, I think we can often be guilty of accumulating books without ever letting any go. But realistically, I think that we could all do with letting go of any books that fall into one of two categories. We don't need to keep books that we've read and won't read again, or books that we own but never are going to read. Books are designed to serve the practical purpose of actually being read, and so if you're never actually going to to look through or read and enjoy a book in your possession, perhaps it might be a good idea to let go of it. Number six is towels. And with this one, I like to hold to a very similar philosophy to what I keep to with sheets. I like to keep one per potential guest that we could have in our house. And if the number of towels that you have in your linen closet far outnumber the number of potential guests you could have in your home, it might be time to consider letting go of some of them. And of course, while you're at it, keep an eye out for any towels that are threadbare, stained, or worn out. 
but I find often this, especially in bathrooms with sunlight or simply your towels get used often as they can experience some serious discoloration, particularly hand towels. So just keep an eye out for that and let go of any that are no longer meeting your needs. Number seven is clothing that doesn't suit your lifestyle. Our lives aren't static and nor should our wardrobes be. As you experience life changes, whether that's that you begin working from home permanently, maybe you start a new job, you move to a new area, or perhaps you start a family, those are all big life changes that are naturally going to require that your wardrobe shift and adapt and evolve as a result. So as your life changes, don't be afraid to let go of and to donate clothing that no longer suits the lifestyle that you now lead. Number eight is photos, and specifically, Digital pictures are an area where many of us tend to accumulate these in vast amounts of excess. If we were to realistically look through the pictures that we have on our phone and our computers, we'd probably easily be able to say that thousands of them are images that we don't actually need to keep for the long haul. So I know this one can feel overwhelming, but just try going through your phone for five minutes a day and deleting any old duplicate or unwanted pictures. This is an easy way to eliminate the excess digital clutter and to focus on only keeping the memories that you want to look back on. And then number nine is food storage containers. And this one is pretty straightforward. First, look through and figure out if you have any mismatched storage containers. Do you have any lids that don't have matching bottoms or bottoms that you can't find the lid that it matches to? If that's the case, you can immediately declutter those. But then also too, often when it comes to food storage, we tend to keep more than we need. So I'd really recommend going through and figuring out, do you have more than you need? Or perhaps are there some that are awkward and that you don't really use as a result of that? You can definitely declutter those as well. The 10th item is your car. And no, I'm not talking about getting rid of the physical vehicle, although, if you want to sell your car, then more power to you. But just think back, when was the last time that you went through and really cleaned out your car in depth and getting rid of all of the excess and the trash that had built up? If it's been a while, I definitely recommend taking some time to clean out your car. Trust me, you're going to feel great with this one when it's finished. Start off by taking out anything that doesn't belong in your car and return it to its home. Then spend some time really cleaning out any trash that's built up in it whether that's old napkins, gum wrappers, or anything else. And then finally, take a few minutes to organize anything that you want to keep in your car. Honestly, this isn't something that takes long to do, but it feels amazing afterwards. Number 11 is jewelry. And with this one, you want to focus on really taking out and decluttering anything that's tarnished, broken, or that you can't remember the last time that you wore. And those ones are fairly standard and straightforward, but I encourage you to go a level deeper with this one too. Something that I've often noticed is that we can tend to accumulate pretty much duplicate jewelry. It might not be the exact same jewelry item, but it's extremely similar. And so if you have duplicate or almost duplicate jewelry items hanging about your jewelry collection, I'd really encourage you to keep just one rather than multiple. Number 12 is membership cards. And whether it's to your favorite local restaurant or a grocery store or anything else, most of the time nowadays, they can actually look up your membership card using your phone number rather than having to carry around a physical card with you. So if your wallet is chock full of membership cards to various locations, I definitely recommend going through it and seeing which of them you might be able to get rid of because they can simply look it up digitally. All right, number 13 is your downloads folder. The great thing about clearing out your downloads folder is that you can actually create space on your computer while in the process of simplifying. So it's really a win-win. If it's been months or even years since you last cleaned out your download folder, take some time to really go through and figure out what you do you need to keep because often there are some important documents on there but then move them to the appropriate location and then clear out all of the excess junk that is just taking space on your computer. And then once you've done this, try building on the work that you've done by really creating a habit around every so often clearing out your downloads folder so it doesn't build up to extraordinary levels again. Next, number 14 is cards. And for most of us, even though we get a lot of cards every single year, whether that's for Christmas, birthdays, special events, events or anything like that, often we don't actually look through and reference them 
once we've received them. If you are a sentimental person like I am, it's okay to hold on to a few that are really meaningful, but what I like to do is really to consider the rule of 2%. If I look back at all of the cards I've ever received, I'd say only one to two percent of the cards really are those meaningful ones that I want to look back on years from now. So it's fine to keep some cards and letters if you really find them meaningful. Of course, if you don't, you can get rid of them entirely. But try keeping only the ones that are the most special and that you're most going to want to look back on years from now. On a slightly more practical note, number 15 is to declutter old socks. I find that socks tend to wear out faster than any other clothing item that we own and so it's important that we go through them a bit more frequently than we do other areas. The good thing though is that this only takes a few minutes to do. Look through your socks and figure out if there are any that are mismatched and that you can't find the pair to. And of course if you come across any that have holes in them or they're stretched and they don't really stay properly on your foot, it's time to get rid of those as well. The 16th thing that you can declutter this year is workout equipment that you don't use. Workout equipment is only useful in so much as you actually actively use it. Often we'll tend to either favor some workout equipment over other items or simply dream of using the equipment without actually ever touching it. If either of those are true for you and you have pieces of workout equipment that haven't been used in months, then it might be time to consider letting go of those items. All right, 17 is an important one, and that's incomplete creative projects. If you have any creative projects lying about your house that you've started but never completed, whether that's a painting that you began but never finished, an embroidery piece that you picked up but never quite completed, or anything else, it's important that you don't let those projects sit around in limbo forever. Either finish it or get rid of it. But if you're not happy with how it's turning out or you didn't actually enjoy the project that you started thinking you would have fun with, then don't be afraid to move on from that creative endeavor. Okay, number 18 is your desktop. And cleaning out your desktop can be really helpful because it can help you to create a clean slate and really just a blank space for you to be able to begin work from each day. It can help you to stay more focused and productive. And also, rather than just using your desktop as a dumping ground, moving files to where they should belong or deleting them can also help add organization to your computer. Computer. The 19th thing you can declutter is coupons and receipts. And coupons and receipts are small nuisances that really take up space and I feel like are always where they shouldn't be. They're always cluttering up either the bottoms of our bags or purses or we find them on the floor in our car or just some of the randomest places. Unless you're actually going to use a coupon or you need to save a receipt for tax purposes, there is no good reason why you should be holding on to them. So just give a quick look over of the areas where coupons and receipts tend to creep into your life and make sure that you eliminate any that you find. And then we've got two left here. Number 20 is to declutter your fridge. Go through your fridge and your freezer and try to declutter any expired foods or foods that no one in your family is going to eat. Pay specific attention to things like condiments. Often those will expire without you even realizing it. And try to think about when was the last time that you used that item and either how can you use it up or are you ever going to use it? And might it be better if you were to give it to someone who actually does actively use and enjoy using that item? Just because food is perishable doesn't mean that it can't add clutter. So it's important to really go through and just edit your fridge and freezer every so often to make sure that the food inside it is actually going to be eaten by you. And then finally, number 21 is unused hangers. If you have excess hangers on hand, either because you recently decluttered or you just have quite a few spare hangers, I'd recommend getting rid of them. Donate them or give them to a friend, but try to get them out of your life. And the reason for it is this. When we have extra hangers, it is so much easier for us to just accumulate items of clothing that we don't need simply because we have the hangers for them and can easily hang them up. So by getting rid of any excess hangers that you have, it can just be one small way that you can help to maintain a more minimal and simple space. Okay, well that's it. Those are 21 things that you can declutter in 2021. And I hope this list inspires you to get to decluttering and to simplify your 
your life. And if you are in the process of simplifying and decluttering your home, then great news! My ebook, The Simple Guide to Decluttering Your Home, is actually on sale right now for 10% off. In it, I share some of my best tips on decluttering, including how to decide what to get rid of, what common decluttering mistakes to avoid, and how to maintain a simplified space once you've finished decluttering. So if you want to learn that and so much more, I definitely recommend checking out my ebook and learn how you can transform your space from chaos to calm. So I'll have all the information about that linked up for you in the description box below. And don't forget that if you want to get 10% off of your purchase, you can just use the code February at checkout. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would love it if you would give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to comment below what is one thing that you want to declutter in 2021. Be sure to comment that down below. I love hearing from you guys. But that is everything that I have for you today. Thank you all so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.